Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Kevin and this is my wife Sarah. Well, if there's one thing that we absolutely love on our homestead, it's our ducks. And we know that a lot of you really enjoy them as well. Uh, somehow they seem to find their way into just about every video that we do uh, outside. So They uh, like the spotlight. Yeah, they always, they're photobombing like every video that we do. Yeah. So we only have three ducks here on the homestead and really Sarah and I were talking that they're probably the most enjoyable animal that we have. Absolutely. We love watching them. They have such cute personalities. They don't get into a lot of trouble. Uh, they don't mess up with our plants and jump up on things and they really don't poop everywhere. Uh, so we really do enjoy the ducks right. and today is such a crummy day. We can't do anything outside. It's cold, it's rainy and yucky. So we would, thought we would take a trip up to Cackle Hatchery in Lebanon, Missouri, which is about an hour and a half or a little bit longer away from our homestead to pick up some ducklings. Yeah, so we're going to get their uh, brooder area all set up before we leave this morning so that when we get back with the ducklings, we'll have a nice warm area for them. We're going to get the same type of ducks that we have now, which are Indian runner ducks, uh, but we're gonna get two different colors. Uh, we're getting the fawn color, which is what we currently have. We're going to get three more of those. And then we're also gonna get a black uh, runner duck, which are kind of a black and blue kind of color, which are pretty neat. And we're going to get uh, two, male, two females and a male of each color. So that way in the future, we can just hatch our own. Right now we only have female ducks. So even though we've wanted to hatch some, we haven't had a male duck to, you know, make babies with. Uh, so this will allow us to hatch ducks from here on out, uh, whatever we need for the homestead. So it'll be nice. So we're gonna get busy setting up the brooder. We'll show you how we set it up. When we lived in Arizona, we raised a lot of ducks. We had 30 or 40 ducks at all times. Uh, so we have a lot of experience raising them. Uh, we had them for several years. We really enjoyed it. So we're gonna get things back set up the way that we did before, and we'll get these babies all taken care of. A lot of times we use hay or straw for animal bedding, but with ducklings or any other waterfowl that are gonna get kind of messy and wet, we actually prefer uh, these wood chips. These are pine shavings. We don't ever use cedar shavings. That's not good for animals, uh, but we use these pine shavings um, and I think that they do really well. And these pine shavings are really coarse. They're not the really tiny pieces. And um, that will be better for these ducklings too because they won't accidentally ingest any of them. So we get these pine shavings in a compressed bale. Uh, so initially it doesn't look like there's much in there, but as you fluff it up, um, it's, it's actually quite a bit uh, of bedding in here. And because we're only going to raise six ducklings, um, this bedding will stay, you know, pretty fresh for uh, quite a long time, unlike when we raise, you know, 50 plus broiler chickens. So there's one thing that we've learned after raising a lot of ducklings, and that is that there is no just standard kind of waterer that works very well for them because they're so messy. So like a chick waterer or even a quail waterer, uh, they just don't do well because the ducks basically will spend their entire time playing in the water until it's all gone. So we've come up with a way that we've been using for quite a few years now of how to make a homemade water that's super cheap, works well, and for the most part keeps the ducks from playing in the water. Now one thing that you need to know about ducklings is that they shouldn't swim until they're at least a month old. Their feathers uh, that they are born with don't have natural oils on them to protect them from water. So the down feathers that they have will actually soak up water and they can drown or get cold really easily. Now I know this may sound weird because in the wild you see ducklings with their moms swimming in the water when they're really little. 
Well, that's because the mom will put some of her oil on those babies to protect them. But when you're raising them at home, there is no mom, so you need to not allow the babies to actually get in water and swim until they're at least a month old. So the water that we're going to design uh, does that. It won't allow them to actually get in the water and play around in it. The way we're going to make it is just with an empty uh, one gallon jug. You can use a milk jug or like in this case it's an empty vinegar jug. Um, and then we're just going to put some holes in it so that they can stick their head in and drink. And I'll show you that in just a second. Now in this bottle I'm just going to put two holes. With only six ducklings there's no reason that more than two of them need to be drinking at one time. It's just asking for an even bigger mess. So I'm going to drill two holes in this bottle. Uh, I'm going to use a one and a half inch hole saw. You could just use a, a sharp knife if that's all you have. And then we're just going to drill them about, I don't know, three inches off the bottom of the vinegar bottle. Um, and then that's how much water it'll hold. Now you may come out and the water may be out. That's okay. You're going to have to fill this several times a day. But they're not going to die if they're without water for, you know, a little while. But you want to check on them pretty often, especially when they're real little. So we're going to drill these holes and then we'll fill this up with water. All right, so I've got my two holes drilled in here. Now I'll rinse this out really good to make sure there's no plastic shavings anywhere in it. And then we'll fill it up with water and we'll fill it up just below those holes. Now I'll also keep an eye on them over the next, you know, couple hours to make sure, uh, you know, if they can get inside and ducklings, if they can get inside and use it as a little pond, they will. So I'll make sure that they can't. If they do, luckily I've got a couple more bottles in the house. I'll make one with smaller holes and then we'll just save this one for as they get a little bit bigger. So, um, but I think it's going to work out well. I'm going to go rinse it out and we'll fill it up. All right, so it's time to put down their, their food in water. Uh, we're going to use the same system that we use when we uh, raise chickens, and that is I'm going to put down one of these pans. Now, this is a water heater pan you can just buy at Home Depot or Lowe's or your local hardware store, and basically we'll put the food and the water inside of this pan. That way, if they make a big mess, it stays in here and doesn't get all over their bedding, uh, and especially with ducklings, that's a big deal. All right, so I've got their water in there already. You can see that it's just below the bottom of the holes. And then for the food, we're just gonna use a regular chick feeder like you would for chickens. Now, we're using an 18% uh, non-medicated chick starter. With ducks or any type of waterfowl, you never wanna use a medicated feed. Uh, it will kill them. So it's really important that you buy the non-medicated uh, chick starter anytime you're raising waterfowl. This is an 18%. They'll be on this for only the first two weeks. Another thing with waterfowl, and especially ducks, is that if you leave them on a high protein feed for more than the first two weeks, they can develop a condition called angel wing. We actually had this happen when we first started out raising ducklings and um, one of our ducklings ended up with a wing that just stuck straight out and it pretty much stays that way forever once it happens. So uh, you really want to change them from an 18, they can start on an 18 to 20 percent, whatever you can get, but after two weeks you need to lower them down to 16 percent. So you also don't want to go much lower than 16 percent because that can cause other problems. So this is all set up. We're going to uh, turn on some heat lamps for the ducklings because it's cold out today. It's only in the 40s. Uh, they're going to need some heat out here, so we will use some heat lamps. Then we're going to we're going to let those on while we run uh, to go pick up the ducklings. We're getting these ducklings from Cackle Hatchery, which is a hatchery about an hour away from our house. We normally buy all of our chickens and other birds from a hatchery called Whelp Hatchery, and we've told you guys about them in the past. But for waterfowl, for some reason, they're not allowed to ship waterfowl into Missouri. So our only option is to buy them from somewhere where we can go get them or have them shipped from a hatchery within the state. So since it's only an hour away and today's kind of a crummy day outside, we're going to take a road trip to go pick up the ducklings. So I'm going to turn on the heat lamps and then we're going to hop in the car and we're going to go. With the heat lamps, we want to keep them so that the ducklings will be around 100 degrees. Um, it doesn't matter if they can get away from that, 
but you want a spot where they can get nice and warm when they want to. So we're going to turn those on and get ready to go. The brooder is all set up, so now it's time for us to head out and go get them from the hatchery. We've got the ducklings and they all look really nice and healthy now again we got two females and a male of each color so we've got six more of them that'll give us nine ducks here on the homestead i think that'll be about perfect but the nice thing is from now on if we want to just hatch some of our own once these guys start laying we'll be able to do that so i'm gonna go ahead and take them out one at a time they're a little bit chilly from being in the car, so we're going to get them underneath their heat lamp. Now, with a heat lamp, you want to have it so that, you know, they can get nice and warm when they want to, but enough room that they can move away to, you know, cool themselves off or heat up, cool themselves off, heat up. You don't, you don't want to have the heat lamp right by their food and water. You want them to have to, you know, move away a little bit to get their food and water. Uh, so uh, this is really a good setup that we have here for them. I am going to try to show them where their water is so that they know. And we'll just do that by taking them one at a time and dipping their little beak in the water. And then they'll learn pretty quickly where that water is. And I'm going to just spill out a little bit of feed here by their feeder too. So hopefully they'll find that. That's not quite as critical as quickly as the water. But if they find a little bit, then they'll figure out that the rest is right there in the feeder. So looks like they're enjoying that heat lamp though. Well, it's been a little over an hour since we brought the ducklings home. They're all settling in well. They're learning uh, where their food and water is. We've seen them all individually find the food and the water. Uh, they're also learning that they can go under their heat lamp to get warm, uh, which is where they are right now. Uh, that's good because it's been really a kind of a cold, dreary day. Um, I'm not sure what's happening with the weather here in the Ozarks. I don't know if it's crazy by you guys too, but we were in the 80s, then the 30s, then back to the 80s, now the low 40s. It's just been a really crazy spring so far. It has been. But you guys, we are so excited to have these little guys this spring. You guys get to watch them grow up and you'll be able to see us introduce them into our other flock of three. One thing I'm curious about is if these guys will like stay together in their little clique and our clique of three, uh, our group of three, if they'll have their own little clique and they'll all go separate ways or if they'll, you know, go around the homestead all together in one group. We are going to have them all sleep in the same house that we have them at night. Um, but we're excited to expand this part of our homestead. We have really enjoyed ducks all along. You know, they do go through a messy point when they're ducklings. Um, but we've learned how to manage that. Right. And, uh, oh, they're just the sweetest thing. And we're so excited to have them. Well, you guys, we're glad that you joined us today to come along as we uh, really did something when we woke up this morning we weren't planning on doing, at least not today. We knew we were going to get more this spring, just not today. Uh, we're super excited to have them. We're excited to share uh, with you guys as they grow up. Ducks grow up really fast. You'll be surprised in just a few weeks how big they're getting already. So we'll give you guys updates and let you know how they're doing. If you have any questions for us about raising ducks, let us know. If you have any suggestions for us, if you've raised a lot of them as well, 
Uh, we always uh, feel like we can learn more, so let us know that as well. You guys, thank you so much for coming by the homestead today. If you know someone who would enjoy our channel, don't forget to share this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're not a subscriber. And until next time, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care, and God bless. God bless.